I say, no, I'm still doing it. <laughs> right? Go back and look at the original question. Do you think humans are still evolving? Doesn't that question assume that evolution happened? Mm -hmm. What if a kid doesn't believe in evolution at all? How's he supposed to answer that question? This question is not designed to teach the kid how to think. This is designed to teach him what to think. This is a Soviet-style indoctrination type question. And when the kid's all done taking this course, he's going to think he knows how to think. But he doesn't. He knows how to be told what to think. He's been indoctrinated. That's all that's happened. And they're going to say, boys and girls, we've got evidence of evolution from structure. This is called the homology argument. They're going to say, boys and girls, if you look at the four limbs of the animals, you will see the human has two bones in the wrist, and they're called the radius and the ulna. Yep, I knew about that. I broke both of mine a couple times. And boys and girls, guess what? Take a look at the whale. He's got two bones in his flipper, and they're called the radius and the ulna. See, that proves we're related. Uh, teacher, who named them? The whale? <laughs> I doubt it, right? But the textbook says this similar structures in the forelimbs is one of the evidences for evolution. Here's what it says right here. I didn't write this, okay? This is from the book that you and I paid for. It says, boys and girls, comparative anatomy provides further evidence of evolution. The commonality suggests that these and other vertebrate animals are all related. They probably evolved from a common ancestor. Uh, hold on just a minute. This is line number 10. This does not prove they have a common ancestor. This might prove they have a common designer. You know, maybe the same guy designed them all. That would make them similar, wouldn't it? Did you know the lug nuts from a Chevy will screw onto a Pontiac? That proves they both evolved from a Honda 18 million years ago. Uh, no, that proves they both came from the same designers, right? It's not proof for common ancestor. But they're going to say, you know what, boys and girls, many animals have a similar forelimb structure. Good observation. They must have had a common ancestor. Eh, hold it. Bad conclusion. Jump, frog, jump. And then they'll say, see, this helps prove we all came from a rock. Oh, real bad conclusion. Now, this textbook says we've got evidence from development. Now, there aren't too many things about evolution theory that make me any angrier than this. So I will, try, I will try to stay calm as we discuss this tonight. This is a BSCS biology textbook. By the way, BSCS series is one of the worst there is as far as teaching evolution. It almost always rates the highest in evolution teaching as far as the percentage of text devoted to evolution. And you ought to, some books are worse than others. We'll get into more of that later. But uh, this one says, the similarity between early stages in the development of many different animals helped convince Darwin that all forms of life shared common ancestors. What's he talking about here? This uh, Merrill Earth Science book says we've got evidence for evolution from embryology. The embryos growing inside the mother. It says it has gills like a fish. Are those little folds of skin gills? I'm sorry, that is lie number 11. Those folds of skin are not gills. Those little folds of skin under the chin later develop into glands in the throat and bones in the ear. It never has anything to do with breathing. Never. I've seen fat folks that have five or six chins and they cannot breathe through any of them except the top one. Okay? Those are not gill slits. Ernst Haeckel made up this whole thing back in 1869. See, Haeckel read Darwin's book when it came out. The book was published in 1859. Haeckel read it apparently the next year, 1860. As he read this book, he really liked it. He said, wow, Darwin says we will find evidence for the theory. Now, Haeckel taught embryology at the University of Jena in Germany. He knew they were looking for evidence to support the theory. Nobody found any. So 10 years later, Haeckel decided he would help the cause out by making some evidence to support the theory. He took the drawing of a human and a dog embryo, and he changed them. He made his drawings look just alike, and said, see, this proves the human and the dog are related. Look how similar the embryos are. Hmm. He lied, folks. He did this in 1869. On top are Haeckel's drawings. Underneath are actual photographs of those creatures. Now, either Haeckel is a real lousy artist or he's a liar. 
He made huge charts of his fake drawings and traveled all over Germany, and Haeckel was the man who just about single-handedly converted the Germans to believing in evolution. That logical next step from that teaching was, well, if evolution is true, maybe one race is superior to the rest. And maybe that's the German race. And maybe we ought to go beat everybody up and take over the world. And you won't understand the history of the last 150 years till you tie evolution into it. Haeckel was convicted of fraud at his own university. They had a trial. He was convicted of fraud. Did you know in 1874, it was proven Haeckel was wrong. He was a liar. But guess what? This year at University of West Florida, they are still using Haeckel's drawings as evidence for evolution. Proven wrong 125 years ago. Now, I know it takes a little while for textbooks to get up to date, but I think 125 years is plenty of time, okay? By the way, in Ireland, they're still using this embryology idea as evidence for evolution. They're still using it in Holt biology, used in Escambia County in Santa Rosa County, Florida. They're still using it in Glencoe biology, saying the embryo has gill slits. They're still using it at Troy State University, Alabama, saying the embryo has gill pouches. It's used in every school that I have been to. Bring me your textbooks from your city, and I will show you it's still in there. Because they don't have a replacement. They don't want to take out all these evidences because they don't have any replacement. This one shows a five to six week embryo, and it says by seven months, the fetus looks from the outside like a tiny normal baby, but it is not. It's not a baby at seven months. Excuse me, a whole bunch of kids born at five and a half months survive. That's a lie, folks. It is human at conception. Don't tell the kids it's not a baby at seven months. It is human the moment it's conceived. Did you know a lady had surgery on her baby before the baby was born? They cut the mother open, cut the uterus open, and the baby reached out and grabbed the doctor's finger. Five months along. No, it's human at conception. The angel of the Lord said, Behold, thou art with fetus. No, I believe he said you are with child, didn't he? See, it's a child, not a choice. It's a child. So why do they keep this lie in the textbooks anyway? Well, that's the only way to justify abortion. They want the kid to think this is not a human, this is just a fetus, it's just a, a thing, you know, it's a blob of tissue, it's a, it's a problem, it's in the way, we can eliminate this with an abortion. So this stuff is kept in the textbooks to justify abortion. Maybe you heard about Anna Rosa. She was a botched abortion. She had her arm chopped off. She survived the abortion, believe it or not. Everybody says, oh, that's terrible. I agree. But what if they would have cut her head off instead? We never would have heard about her, would we? Hey, it happened today to 4,500 kids in America, probably some in your town. Now listen, abortion is not the unpardonable sin. I've got some very close, dear friends that have had an abortion. God still loves you. He can still use you. But it is murder. A lot of this Bible is written by folks that were murderers. God can forgive you, and he can still use you in a great way. Moses was a murderer. King David was a murderer. You, don't, you just don't want to justify it, that's all. Admit, God, I'm sorry, it was wrong. Please forgive me and help me get on with my life. God can still use you in a great way. Don't get discouraged, but don't go around claiming it's okay, because it's not. Now, I live in Pensacola, Florida. <clears throat> you might have heard of my town. We've had several abortion clinics blown up and several doctors shot and killed that were performing abortions. I didn't shoot any doctors and I didn't blow any clinics up. Okay? And I don't think Jesus would do it that way either. He didn't, you know, he lived under Roman, and con Roman control. He didn't go around blowing up tanks and burning down bridges. But the doctors were murderers, plain and simple. When the first doctor got shot, I was preaching down in Fort Lauderdale at Coral Ridge Presbyterian uh, Christian School. And the next day I was flying home. Right in front of me on the airplane were two ladies, uh, forget that, I'm sorry, two women from NOW, National Organization for Wild Women. They were going to come up to Pensacola and hold a rally and march around town, you know, protesting this doctor getting shot. As we got off the plane, we're walking down the gangway, I noticed they had on their shirt in huge block letters, choice above all. So being my mild-mannered self, I said, excuse me, ma'am, what does this mean, choice above all? 
She said, we believe a woman ought to have a right to choose. I said, choose what? She said, choose to have an abortion. It's her body, you know. Well, yes, ma'am. If she wants to abort her body, I suppose that's fine. <laughs> but you know, it looks to me like she's trying to abort somebody else's body. I said, ma'am, I'm kind of curious about this. I've got three kids, one of each. I delivered one of my kids at home. He's sitting right there. Um, I said, I taught biology and anatomy. I used to raise hamsters. Uh, I'm kind of familiar with how this works. I said, would you please tell me why the woman's right to choice stops at birth? I mean, why don't we let the mother choose to kill the baby after it's born? It'd be a lot safer and simpler. Hey, I got an idea. Let's extend abortion rights up until the kid is two years old. I know a lot of mothers with a two-year-old that have thought about it a time or two. <laughs> we thought about it a lot when my kids were two. Hey, I got an idea. Let's extend abortion rights up, up until the kid is 18. I bet they'd behave a lot better. Okay, son, one more time and I'm going to abort you. <laughs> Teacher, where's Johnny today? Well, he didn't do his homework yesterday, so his mommy aborted him. Hey, grades would skyrocket, wouldn't they? Well, the ladies, I'm sorry, the women did not want to talk about it anymore, so they went and got their luggage and I got my luggage and I'm waiting to, you know, have them take me home. I have the taxi cab take me home. And there's a cameraman there. He showed up from Chicago to film the rally. You know, the, the news media and the textbooks always tries to make the abortion crowd look good. They use positive sounding words like pro-choice. And they use negative sounding words for us like anti-abortion. You ever notice that in the textbooks and in the news media? It's always pro-choice and anti-abortion. How about let's call them pro-death? Mm -hmm. Well, I got talking to this cameraman, you know, he's going to film the rally. I thought, wait a minute, it's going to make worldwide news, you're going to get six people marching around town? You can get 100,000 people to lie in your streets against abortion and it won't make the news. Have you noticed that? So I'm talking to the cameraman and I said, uh, you know, I live right here in Pensacola and I think there's two things wrong with what happened to this doctor. He said, oh yeah, what's wrong with this? I said, well, there should have been a trial first. Nobody should be shot without a fair trial. <laughs> I said, secondly, the state of Florida should have shot him after the trial. Griffith uh, shouldn't have shot him. If you don't understand my position on abortion, see me later. I'll try to clarify it for you. <laughs> but they always give them the positive sounding words. That's one of the reasons I won't take the local newspaper. I'm sorry, I just don't want my money going to support that cause. We get a call at the office once in a while, hey, would you like to take the Pensacola News Journal? I say, no ma'am, we don't have a parakeet. <laughs> You'll figure that one out later. The news media is always slanted to the liberal side. Remember when the kids got shot in Colorado? Right away they jumped on gun control, didn't they? Wait a minute. If kids keep getting shot in our schools, maybe it's time to look at a couple of other issues. You know, maybe the real issue is, should we have public schools? I mean, at least let's discuss it. Maybe the real issue is, should we teach the kids evolution, which says there is no God, which ultimately leads to this kind of behavior? You don't, probably don't know it, but both the boys that did the shooting were strong believers in evolution. They did the shooting on Adolf Hitler's birthday, on purpose. They shot Isaiah Scholes just because he was black and Hitler was a racist big time. Eric's t-shirt said, natural selection. They shot uh, Cassie just because she believed in God. See, evolution is the opposite of that. And you can't blame guns for what happened at Columbine. Those kids broke 18 gun laws when they went into the school to shoot everybody. Do you think two more gun laws would have stopped them? See, blaming guns for Columbine is like blaming spoons for Rosie O'Donnell being fat. It is not the spoon's fault, okay? And it's not the gun's fault either. You know, maybe the real issue is, should certain criminals be publicly executed? In France, they were dragging this guy to the guillotine to chop his head off one time, and somebody from the crowd shouted, do you think this will deter crime? Uh, they said it will for him. <laughs> it certainly will. You know, maybe the real issue is, all law-abiding citizens should be required to carry guns to protect themselves. Now, I'm not saying, I'm saying we should just discuss these things, okay? Suppose every kid, in, suppose every teacher in Columbine High School, just the teachers, suppose the teachers were required to carry a gun. 
How far down the hallway would those kids have gotten? Mm -hmm. All any kid has to do is run to the nearest classroom and say, Teacher, teacher, there's boys out there shooting everybody. Okay, kids, read page 37. I'll be right back. <laughs> you say, that's terrible. Oh, you mean it's better for all the kids to get shot? Think about it. Lenin said, one man with a gun can control 100 people without one. Imagine you're in a bank waiting to cash a check or get some cash. A guy walks in, pulls out a gun, and says, everybody lay on the floor. Everybody lays on the floor. Right? He's in control. Now, imagine everybody that's a customer at the bank has a, has a weapon hidden. Everybody has a concealed weapon. The guy runs in, everybody lay on the floor. <laughs> now, you lay on the floor, sir. <laughs> now look, I'm in favor of gun control. I really am. Gun control is being able to hold it steady <laughs> and hit the intended target. That's gun control. Anyway, back to the issue here. The logic they used to justify abortion is absolutely insane. They're going to say it's not human. I'm sorry, that was proven wrong in 1874. They're going to say, well, it's not viable. It can't live on its own. Uh, you're not viable either, stark naked on the North Pole, you know. <laughs> Is the baby viable after it's born? Mm -hmm. Lay it on the sidewalk for a couple of months. Let's see how it does, right? They're going to say, well, the child might be unwanted. There's kids that are already born that are unwanted. Should we kill all of them? My parents moved four times when I was growing up, but I found them every time. They're going to say, the child might be a financial burden. Show me a kid that's not. <laughs> Every kid's a financial burden. They're going to say, well, it may be from rape or incest. Well, then kill the rapist, not the baby. Execute the rapist and adopt out the baby. It's not that complicated, you know. See, in case you don't know how it works, there's three people involved here, the mother, the father, and the baby. If we have to kill one, why is it always the baby? Why don't we abort the mother once in a while? Hmm? One doctor got kind of upset with me and he said, Dr. Hovind, do you think if a woman is raped and gets pregnant, she should be required to carry the baby? I said, sir, that's a horrible thought. But suppose it happens. And suppose she does carry the baby. And she has her baby. Five years later, she is holding her five-year-old and she's trying to cook supper. And her mind flashes back to the horrible experience she had and she loses control just for a few minutes and kills her five-year-old. Is it murder? He said, y yes. I said, oh, okay. Suppose she would have killed it five months after it was born. Would that be murder? He said, yes. I said, well, suppose she would have killed it five minutes after it was born. Would that be murder? Uh, he could see where I was going. I said, let me help you out, sir. Yes. What if she would have killed it five minutes before it was born? like the DNC, or the uh, DNX abortion that Clinton and Gore voted for. It's still murder, folks. Still murder. And to me, abortion is a major issue. I won't vote for any candidate if I think he supports abortion. I'd rather have Mickey Mouse in there than a candidate that supports abortion. Hey, if you really want pro-choice, let's really have choice in Florida. Is it against the law in your county to shoot deer at night with spotlights? You have to give them a sporting chance, right? We're going to pass a law in Florida that says if a woman goes for an abortion, the nurse will have a jar of marbles, and we're going to give the kid a sporting chance. We're going to have a lottery, okay? One, one marble in the jar will say baby, one will say mother, and one will say father. Let's put one more in there for doctor and another one in there for governor. <laughs> and we're going to draw a marble to see who gets killed. And let's put a whole bunch in there for president, and let's make it, you know, a good lottery here. So we're going to have a lottery. Hey. How many folks would have an abortion then? Hmm? Hey, did you know that everybody that ever voted for abortion has already been born? Now think about that one. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, well, abortion is legal. That doesn't mean it's right. In 1936, the German Supreme Court declared Jews are not persons. And with that decision, it cleared the way for Hitler to begin slaughtering the Jews. They began rounding up the Jews and torturing them and killing them. I've been to Germany three times. I read lots of books about Hitler and the Holocaust just to keep my blood boiling. 
What he did was because of his belief in evolution. That's why he killed the Jews, folks. Hitler believed the German race was the superior race and they deserved to rule the world. The German Fuhrer has consistently sought to make the practice of Germany conform to the theory of evolution. Did you know Hitler offered to send the Jews to anybody who would take them? Roosevelt refused to allow the Jews to come to America in 1938. Hitler said, I'll send them to you on luxury ships. America wouldn't take them. In Hitler's book, which was ghostwritten for him, 1924, Hitler said, no more than nature desires the mating of weaker with stronger individuals, even less does she desire the blending of a higher with a lower race. Adolf, who is a higher race? In his book, he continually talks about Aryan blood, the superior race and the lower peoples. Who's a lower people, Adolf? Well, I happened to find Hitler's hit list one day as I was researching on Hitler. Hitler thought the Nordics, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegians, were close to pure Aryan, the superior race. Uh, did you catch all that? Blonde hair, blue-eyed Norwegian. Vord and started to da, ya, sure, you betcha. Oof, da. Uh, he thought they were the superior race. He thought the Germans were mostly Aryan. He said the Mediterraneans are slightly Aryan. The Slavics are half Aryan, half ape. The Orientals are slightly ape, the black Africans are predominantly ape, and the Jews are close to pure ape. There's the list he was going on, folks. That's why he hated the Jews, because of his belief in evolution. He really thought he was doing the world a favor by eliminating the inferiors. By the way, um, he also hated the blacks. Does anybody know where the Olympics was held in 1936? Berlin, Germany. Does anybody know who won the most gold medals? Jesse Owens, the black American athlete. Hitler was so angry he walked out of the stadium and said, it is unfair to make my men race against this animal. Hmm. My Bible says all nations are of one blood. And if you will send money to a missionary to go across the ocean and win a black man to Christ, and you won't go across the street to win a black man to Christ and let him come to your church, you are a hypocrite. And I know I'm standing in the South, but you're still a hypocrite, okay? We're all of one blood, folks. A couple of years ago, when I was in Germany, I went into the courtroom at Nuremberg, where they held the trial. Do you know, during the trial, when those criminals were being tried for what they did, the war crimes, they said, we did nothing illegal, we were just obeying orders. It's exactly correct. But guess what? They were found guilty anyway, weren't they? And even though abortion is perfectly legal in America, Somebody's going to be found guilty of murder someday at God's trial. Don't justify it. 1973, our Supreme Court said the word person does not include the unborn. And with that decision right there, it sealed the fate now of 38 million kids who've died by abortion. That's the whole population of California. Did you know a thousand million, that's a billion kids, have died worldwide? They say the average woman now has one abortion in her lifetime. One per person. One-sixth of the world's population has already been killed just by abortion. Hey, uh, if he's not alive, why is he growing? If he's not a human being, what kind of being is he anyway? And here these doctors get paid to commit these abortions. My Bible says, Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, Amen. The Bible says, God hates hand that, hands that shed innocent blood. It's murder, folks. Margaret Sanger started a group called Planned Parenthood back in 1916. Her goal was to eliminate the inferior races. She thought the uh, blacks, the Orientals, and the Jews were human weeds. She wanted to eliminate them. Their motto was, no gods and no masters. They wanted to use uh, birth control to create a race of thoroughbreds. One of Hitler's doctors wrote an article for her magazine. You know, Hitler referred to the Jews as a parasite in the body of nations. Interesting. The abortionists today refer to the unborn child as a parasite in the woman's body. Margaret Sanger said, we don't want the word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. Wow, interesting. Today they have a Negro president, Faye Waddleton. But the goal has not changed, surprisingly. They're still racist. In 1952, this document was published, 
how to plan your children. Your question's answered. What is birth control? Look what they say here. Is it an abortion? Definitely not. An abortion requires an operation. It kills the life of a baby after it has begun. It is dangerous to your life and health. It may make you sterile. Boy, they've changed their tune in 40 years, haven't they? Now, $300 million goes to support abortion. By the way, United Way is one of Planned Parenthood's supporters. And I remember every couple of months, they'd come around at the job when I worked at General Motors and say, you know, we want to have 100% compliance in United Way. Would you like to give two hours of your paycheck? I said, no. They said, then we can't have 100% compliance. I said, good. I wish you had 0% compliance. Now, United Way probably does some good things but I cannot support an organization that supports killing kids. And if you do, I think you need to check your relationship with God. Something is a little shaky someplace, okay? This textbook says, you have an appendix that is vestigial. You don't need it anymore. I'm sorry, folks. You do need your appendix, okay? This is lie number 13. There are no vestigial organs. The appendix is part of your immune system. If your appendix is taken out, it will shorten your life, probably, because you'll have a higher susceptibility for leukemia, Hodgkin's disease, cancer of the colon, cancer of the ovaries. Now, it is true you can live without your appendix, okay? You can live without both your legs and both your arms also. That doesn't prove you don't need it. There aren't any vestigial organs. And even if there were, that's the opposite of evolution. That's losing, not gaining. Is that how evolution works? You lose everything until you have it all? Oh, I don't get it. This textbook says the whale has a vestigial pelvis. That's not a vestigial pelvis. This book for little bitty kids says, just imagine whales walking around. It's true. What are they talking about here? They're talking about those little bitty bones right there on the whale. Yep, I can see them walking around, can't you? <laughs> That's not a vestigial pelvis. This guy says the same thing. The whale's pelvis is evidence of its evolution from four-legged land-dwelling mammals. I'm sorry, folks. That is not a vestigial pelvis. That is a lie. Those bones are necessary for muscles to attach to so that the whale can reproduce. It has nothing to do with walking on land. It has to do with getting more baby whales. That's not a vestigial pelvis. This one says, humans have a tailbone that is of no apparent use. I was in North Alabama, I uh, was debating against the president of the North Alabama Atheist Association, or something like that, I forget his title. He got up and he said, now folks, we have evidence for evolution. Humans have a tailbone they no longer need. When it was my turn, I got up and I said, Mr. Patterson, I taught biology and anatomy. I happen to know there are nine little muscles that attach to the tailbone, without which you cannot perform some very valuable functions. <laughs> I will not tell you what they all are, but trust me, you need those muscles. I said, now, if you think the tailbone is vestigial, I, Kent Hovind, will pay right now to have yours removed. <laughs> Bend over. <laughs> Folks, that is a lie.